Hi there, this is Dr. Pan recording from Tucson, Arizona. It's 10 o'clock, our local time. It's a beautiful evening outside. Thank you for watching this clip on finding derivative of inverse sine function. This is by request from some of the viewers on my channel. Now, I remember the first time when I saw the proof for this one, I literally cried out, foul! That's just not fair. It's literally like a swindler, someone cheated me out of something. But as years go on, I come to appreciate it, how clever whoever thought that this proof was first time. So let's get started and let's see how we're going to prove this one. When I gave us y is equal to sine theta, it's equivalent to say this angle is equal to sine inverse of y. So basically, we're looking for d theta dx is equal to what? So majority of the action does not happen on this side. It actually happens on that side. First thing we're going to do is we're going to do dy dx. We're going to use chain rule. And then this is cosine theta d theta dx. Okay, so far so good. Nothing tricky over there. d theta dx is the gold nugget we're looking for. So of course we're going to divide everything over. We have d theta dx is equal to 1 over cosine x dy dx. Nothing fancy there. Okay. No tricks there. Now, next tr step is a little bit tricky, but it's not too bad. If you have a y equal to sine x, drawing a picture, here's your theta. Sine is equal to y over 1. Then, therefore, 1 minus y squared. Sorry, I had to squeeze there a little bit. 1 minus y squared using hypotenuse uh, Pythagorean theorem, you'll see the short, shorter leg is 1 minus y squared. And then the cosine theta squared is equal to 1, one over, uh, not 1 over, cosine theta equal to 1 minus y squared over 1. Okay, now I remember when I looked at over here, I, I reluct reluctantly said, all right, okay, fine, I'll go along with that. There's nothing tricky or sneaky there. However, when my teacher wrote the next line, and this is the one I literally cried out, you can't do that. d theta dx is equal to 1 over, I'm just literally copying it in there, 1 minus y squared dy dx. Now from there, I saw what next step is going to be because theta, as I wrote all the way up there in the first place, is the inverse of sine y. And I felt I have been led onto the path that I wasn't willing to go but had no choice. So d dx, well, what's theta? Theta is really sine inverse or arc sine of y. equal to 1 over y minus y squared dy dx. This is my theta. Okay, so coming back to see, well, what's d theta dx? Well, d theta dx is really d dx. What's theta? Let's plug it back in there. Inverse of y is equal to, well, 1 over y minus y squared dy dx. As unfair as it seems to be, there's no logical holes in this proof. And if you look at it over a couple more times, maybe maybe more than a couple times, because I did it look over a couple times, remember thinking, this got to be kidding me. This is just too elegant. I've been fooled all the way. However, math is an elegant science, and in the end, this one does work. And to make the matter worse, later on you're going to be doing integration of y minus dy squared in this form. dy, you guess what that equal to? Arc inverse of x here. Just not fair. I know. But nonetheless, hopefully this proof is clear. Please leave any comment on YouTube for this video. Let me know if it, you liked it or it helped you or any other thoughts you have. All right. Until next time, have a confident day.